My name is Flash Isaac and I am a teacher from the future. Today, I shall be taking you through the characteristics of living things. Characteristics of living things. In the previous class, we introduced biology and we said that biology is the study of living things. And I also established that living things can be divided into plants and animals. So if you were to group the living things we have in this world into two, you are definitely going to see that they are plants and animals. A question comes to mind. If biology is the study of living things, what are living things? What are the characters or properties or behavior that we see and say, oh, this is a living thing? An example of living thing is goats. Goats. What if I say, what are the proof that a goat or goats are living things? Where is goats living and car? All your cars are not living. Despite the fact that they both move. Goat can move, car can move, right? So, why is this a living thing and why is this not a living thing? This is why we need to discuss the characteristics of living things, the features that make living things. Back in the days, we had told that the characteristics of living things can be memorized in this world. Mr. Ninja D. Where M is movement, arrow is respiration, N is nutrition, I is irritability, G is growth, E is excretion, R is reproduction, and D is death. This also makes a lot of sense. However, in the modern days, we prefer to use this updated one, which is Mr. Niger card. So instead of D, we use card. C A D. What means M? M stands for movement. Movement. Living things move from one place to another, or they move parts of their body depending on. Whether you are dealing with plants or you are dealing with animals. Living things move for different reasons. For food, you know. Or you are standing somewhere and you see a pretty girl somewhere under the tree. You know, you compose yourself and you, you move. Yeah, or, you know? or you see a fine boy is not um, looking at you. So you can, you know, you move to gist, you know. Or there is a danger. You run, you move to escape that danger. So, for animals, we move all of our bodies. So, we exhibit a very visible motion. We move very fast. But plants, on the other hand, they don't move. You can't see plants strolling like this, right? However, they move as well. You see the branches, the upper part of the tree, grows towards the sunlight because it needs sunlight. Then the roots move to the ground or grow downward to respond to gravity. The roots of plants can actually grow to, towards the chemical that they actually find uh, useful. So growth occurs both in plants and animals. Another thing that makes living things living is the ability to respire, respiration. Respiration is also referred to as breathing. So, breathing is the process whereby living things 
convert the food or chemical energy stored into the energy that they need. So it's their own way of making food from what you eat. It's like a powerhouse in the body. So as you breathe, you are providing energy and you are at the same time trying to remove the waste part of that food or trying to remove waste product. For animals, they breathe in oxygen. Oh, they breathe out the waste, carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide. Now, for plants, they breathe in carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen because they need that carbon dioxide to make their food. Why we we need oxygen? The animals. Talking about animals, both goats, humans are all classified under animals. Take note of that. You don't hear <laughs> animal and feel we are just talking about goat or fowl or chicken. And nutrition. Nutrition. Another word for nutrition is feeding. Maybe it is feed to survive. Ladies and gentlemen, watching this video, you cannot tell me that you've not eaten for the past six months because that will remove you from the list of living things to the list of non-living things. You can't survive without food, water, or anything nutrient for six months. I don't know, unless you are a better human. So, nutrition is very, very important. Plants feed, animals feed. But looking at this, there are two modes of feeding. We have the autotrophic mode of nutrition, autotrophic. Or let's say we have the autotrophs. Autotrophs. These are living things that make their own food. They don't move around looking for uh, things to make. In other words, they don't depend on other sources to feed. When I mean other sources, okay, let me explain the heterotrophs first, which is another mode of feeding. Heterotrophs or heterotrophic mode of feeding. This type of feeding or this type of living things, they depend on other living things to feed. They don't make their own food. Example, animals, humans. If you live here, you go to the uh, bush to hunt animals to eat. You plant yam, cassava, beans, aguado, bienwa. You plant all of those things. You eat. You depend on all of these things to survive, right? You don't make food from yourself. Now, for plants, they make their own food, right? Making use of carbon dioxide. They make their own food, that is carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight, right? So that process is called photosynthesis. So plants <laughs> make their own food in the process before to photosynthesis. So they are autotrophs. They make their own food. They make what they eat. But for animals, they don't make what they eat. They depend on plants and other things to survive. Fishes, uh, grasses, plants, other lower animals. They prey on them. Which takes us to irritability. Irritability. Irritability is also referred to as sensitivity. Living things are sensitive. They respond to stimuli. Why teaching someone from behind pierces needle in my hand? You see the way I will get shocked once. <laughs> right? <laughs> or I step on hot water. I have to respond. So living things respond to changes in the environment. They respond to stimuli. Same as plants. If you go and cut off the branch of a plant, it falls off. After a while, what do you see? It dies. It has responded to that stimuli. Uh, five, growth. You agree with me that the way I am now is different from how I was when I was giving birth to. I was very small, crying. <laughs> Forget the father for the future, you know? Even you, you are so small. They say, Mama, I love it. They are giving birth to oh, my baby. Oh, oh, oh. You're right? You look very small. So, 
And after a while, you begin to replace some parts, few things to make it ease, your bones start getting stronger, you know, you start to grow. Same with plants. So living things grow and they excrete. Excretion is the removal of waste products. So plants remove waste products, animals remove waste products. Then we have reproduction. They give birth to your mother. Your mother gives birth to you. You will definitely give birth. What are you doing? You are reproducing. You are giving birth to a new one alive. That is reproduction. So, living things, they actually reproduce, which is a very important character. Without reproduction, there won't be the existence of new organisms. Or without reproduction, the human race would have gone extinct long ago. The mango tree at your backyard or in your street is not the first mango tree to exist. There have been other mango trees. So that is the one you have is as a result of other mango trees reproducing or creating um, fruits and seeds that can actually bring new ones like them. So that is reproduction. C. Competition. Competi competition. So resources are scared, scarce in the environment. So they are saying that in economics and commerce, we study how to make effective use or how households or uh, uh, brands can make effective use of the limited resources, can make the best use of resources. So resources are limited, food, space, comfort, and all of that. So living things, they have to fight for the available resources. They must compete for the available nutrients. So competition has been updated as a character that makes living things. You can't be living when you cannot compete. So, competition is another characteristic of living things. And this takes us to adaptation. Adaptation. Adaptation is the process where living things, they try to change shape or adjust to changes in the environment. You have to maintain if you are eating 10 times in your house before, they take you to see your uncle, and you are not seeing food to eat there, you are not eating two times a day. So you have to somehow, somehow adjust your appetite to be able to cope with eating twice a day. Definitely, you are not going to die. No, you definitely be able to adjust. So we try to adapt, adjust to changes. So all living things adapt. Dollar is uh, 150 naira, you find. Dollar goes to 1,260 naira. So many people will not die. People still try to adapt. So you just have to survive in the environment. Change your standing, change your behavior, or change form in order to survive in the environment. That is a major character living things should possess. And finally, death. So living things die. They don't stay living forever. Once they stop breathing, Respiration goes, the heart goes down, that is all. So, living things must possess all of these characteristics. And from the explanation so far, you see that plants possess these characters, animals possess these characters, but cars do not possess it. This does not possess, and this does not possess. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the characteristics of living things. I hope to see you in the next class. Thanks for watching. You're one and only teacher from the future. I hope you found this class interesting. Feel free to check out the playlist for more amazing, amazing videos. And don't fail to install the Flash Learners application right now for notes, videos, and questions to meet all your needs. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any of my sweet videos. See you in the next episode. Don't forget to turn everyone around in the Flash Learners. Bye.